Isn't uh, PGD uh, a form of eugenics, uh, creating a master race? Yeah, th this is a really complicated and I think fascinating and important question that people need to, deb need to be debating. Because on the one hand, yes, PGD is a very high powered technology that would enable us as a whole to begin to select the genetic characteristics of our offspring. And that understandably makes people really scared. Mm. Um, I think we should be scared. I think we should be. By the same token, there, there's, a, there's a critical difference that eugenics was about the state deciding mm -hmm. that these kinds of people shall not be born. What we have with PGD is what some people have called positive eugenics, that it would be the parents deciding not to produce a child with certain characteristics. But it's, it's the classic slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And what, I, what, what my view is very strongly is we can't afford to sort of tuck this technology under the rug because it's not going to go away. The demand is out there. And we need to think about this, this proverbial slippery slope and think where we want to draw lines. Because I think we can draw lines. We can say, and this is what some governments, including the British, are doing. They're saying you can use PGD to prevent against giving birth to a child who is going to die. So you, you're, in other words, you're guarding, you're, you're, you're allowing it to guard against things. Right, but, but you're, you're not allowing people to select, select for four. things. So for example, and again, it's, it's quite interesting here, in the United Kingdom, you cannot use PGD to select gender. Mm -hmm. In the United States, because we have no law, mm -hmm. there's in fact quite an active commercial market in gender selection. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.